Welcome to this episode of Bounded in a Nutshell. Remember to take a moment to click on the link below to donate to a very special organization. Figure Skating in Harlem is the first organization in the world to combine the power of education with the grace and discipline of figure skating. It is dedicated to developing confidence, leadership, and academic achievement in young girls from low-income backgrounds. The numerous stories of success from its alumni owe a great deal to the unique blend of mentoring and self-expression that is championed by FSH. Remember, no donation is too small or too large to keep the dream alive for these exceptional young girls. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Welcome, guys. Lovely to have you. And Annie is raring to go. So, uh, Annie, over to you. Hi, guys. Welcome back. I just wanted to let everybody know I, I I I looked at all your resumes and I I I for those who had a reel or scenes or whatever I I looked at those so I feel like I know you a little bit and uh, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you work in real time. Wonderful. All right, over to you. I will take my role as a glamorized TA right now. Okay. <laughs> um. Let me sit myself up a little bit. Uh, okay, so Chelsea, I think you're yeah. first up. So um, I wanted you to know that I, I, you know, I did, I did watch you, and um, I think you're wonderful. I, I so enjoyed. <coughs> you have a gorgeous voice, and uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you act. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, and you can hear me all right, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, perfect. Okay, so um, this is from a play called Wonder of the World. Uh, so yeah, so I'll just, I'll just dive right into it. Basically, uh, this woman has just left her husband. She found out an unsavory fact about his sexual life. Um, and so she uh, now has this bucket list of things uh, that she feels like she missed out on during that poor marriage decision, so she's kind of off on that journey now, so, all right. 463, my old life is 463 road signs behind me. I just, uh, God, don't you love the smell of a bus? Are you pretending to be asleep? Yeah, that's called playing possum. My husband used to do that to avoid sex, so. <laughs> oh, 464. Yeah, but I know how to spot a faker, and you, you're a little faker. <laughs> hey, uh, you want to strike up some conversation? Uh, my name's Cass, and I just left my husband for very mysterious reasons. So. Okay, uh, I've never been to Niagara Falls before. I almost went once on a family trip, uh, but then Kip proposed, so I had to stay behind and plan our wedding. Yeah, uh, my parents went on without me, and on the drive up, they hit a beaver and lost control of the car and ended up in a ditch. Uh, my mother was killed and my father's legs were crushed, so. Okay, it's your turn to share. <laughs> okay, well, you're a challenge, aren't you? Yeah, well, I am your challenger, so. Yeah, remember when the challenger exploded? That was, that was sad, so. You know, I used to think, that Kip saved my life. But now I think if he hadn't proposed, I would have gone on that trip. And I would have been with my parents and yelled, dad, look out for that beaver. And my mom would still be alive. And we would have gone on to see Niagara Falls. And maybe I would have met a different man, you know, one that I was supposed to be with instead of that two-faced sexual deviant that I married. Oh, well, I lost track of the road signs, but no, that's okay. <laughs> that was getting tiresome. Uh, you want to play punch buggy? And that's it. That's a very funny monologue. <laughs> um, that's, the, that's the nightmare person you get next to on the plane, isn't it? Yeah. Um, who, who's not going to shut up no matter what. Um, I, I'm listening to the piece as I, I, I mean, I just put myself as not only the audience, but the person who's sitting in the seat next to you, you know, um, 
I, I feel like I, I would love to see it again, and I would love to see you do it with, uh, with this in mind, which is, is this woman is completely free associating. It doesn't matter what the, per you know, even if there's a person there, she's just, she can't stop talking. Why can't she stop talking? Because she's, she's in pain. And she, um, she, she needs to talk to somebody, but no, you know, the person is not. <laughs> so she decides some place in there that even though that person is not talking to her, she, she's going to go on because she, she can't not. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I, I just want to, I want to see the reasons behind why she is free associating like that. And it's so needy to continue talking when she's getting absolutely no feedback. You know, it's like when you're an actor and you go out and you're in a comedy and none of your jokes are landing. How do you go on? What is the thing that, it's like, well, the audience just sucks tonight and I'm just gonna do my thing. What is it, you know, in a real life person who compels them to keep on when they're getting no support whatsoever? So, and then that way, the underpinnings of her, of her life start to be revealed because, because, uh, because you, you, you see her, her motivation. So I'd mm -hmm. like to know why she can't stop. So um, I would love, can you, can you do that again and do it in mind of, you know, that she's, she's free associating these traumas in her life as if somebody next to her gave a shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, could, could you do that with that in mind? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, 463. My old life is 463 road signs behind me. So. <sighs> Don't you just love the smell of this bus? <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you pretending to be asleep? Uh, my husband used to do that to avoid sex. So uh, it's called playing possum. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 464, but I can spot a faker, and you are a little faker. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you want to strike up conversation? Uh, my name's Cass, and I just left my husband for very mysterious reasons. Yeah, uh, I've never been to Niagara Falls. I almost went once uh, with my family, but uh, then Kit proposed, so then I had to stay behind and plan the wedding, and my family went on without me. So they hit a beaver on the drive up and lost control of the car and they drove into a ditch and my mother was killed and my father's legs were crushed. Okay, uh, it's your turn to share. Um, okay, well, you are a challenge. <laughs> well, I'm your challenger. So yeah, remember when the challenger exploded? That was, that was sad. Yeah. You know, I used to think that he saved my life. Uh, but now I think that, you know, if he hadn't proposed, then I, I would have gone to, New to Niagara Falls with my family and I would have been there to say, hey dad, look out for that beaver, right? And then my mom would still be alive and we would have gone on to see the falls and maybe I would have met another man, you know, one that I was meant to be with and instead of that sexual two-faced deviant that I married. Yeah, oh, oh, I lost track of the road signs. Oh, uh, well, that's fine. It was getting tiresome anyway. Yeah. Uh, do you want to play punch buggy? I, th I thought that that was much richer. Did it feel different to you? It did. It did. I felt it um, affecting like my voice, like how I was speaking, just thinking like, don't, don't give a shit about this person, you know, just do, do what I need to do to express what I'm dealing with. Yeah. I think it's, it, it's a very rich monologue, you know, somebody half talking to themselves, half trying to engage somebody else. I think, it, you know, I would say everywhere you go, just keep doing this, you know, if you're on a, 
I don't know if your, your town is shut down, but if, if you're on a bus or on a subway or something, just work that monologue all the time because it, it's, it, it's one that you can work all by yourself. You don't, need, you don't really need a scene partner for it. So it's mm -hmm. great that way, but just keep working on it. And I think that you will, um, it's, it's just, it, it's a fantastic thing to, because it's sort of endlessly nuanced. And I think that it will continue to instruct you in, in how to be that person. So I think good choice for you and keep uh, keep working it in your head. And also for something sure. I noticed with that, uh, Chelsea and Annie, what you're saying is that clearly it's it's funny. I mean, it's supposed, it's, I mean, I found myself laughing at moments in it, but the, the character, I don't know what your character's name is, isn't trying to be funny. She's telling a very hard, a really hard story about her life and I just wonder whether in general when we when we approach comedy when we know something is funny the trap we fall into playing funny when sometimes playing the reality of it which is this woman who as you put it and he needs to speak is funny and tragic at the same time do you know what I'm saying instead of thinking oh this is a funny line or this is the funny bit does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah yeah because Chelsea what was I I still found the bits really funny but I find that I'm ready to laugh more with someone that I actually also care about. Is your tragic, uh, is your classic tragic clown. Do you know what I mean? Um, in that sense. And the, the comedy was beautifully taken care of by you, but taking that Annie's note about the real person, the, the, the nuance of the story, these are hard things. And if I don't see someone finding it hard, despite the speed of delivery, then I don't believe the person's real. And so the comedy doesn't quite work as well. Does that make sense? That little yeah. nugget. You're going to be able to nail that because you're, as soon as Annie gave you the note, you opened up without pushing it. You weren't bludgeoning it on the head. You just opened a bit more to the images, right? You actually saw the images a bit more. So it was actually even funnier, but then there was a lot more to it, the real person. So thank you for that. That was great. Mm -hmm. Any last comments, Annie, before we move on? No, just a general note in that I, I've often been asked, you know, what, what, my, what my idea about acting is. And, I mean, it simply boils down to telling the truth. And uh, the difference between comedy and drama is comedy, you just tell the truth faster. <laughs> These are big generalizations, but it's all about unmasking the truth really. So um, there's a lot in there. And I said, keep working on that piece. And I think that that piece is going to be very useful for you. Lovely. Awesome. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So up next is Hillary. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Hillary. Hi. So you're in LA. I am. Oh, I'm sorry. And you teach Pilates. I I'm do. Like, mm -hmm. I just want to keep your number. Yeah, I teach a lot of New Yorkers right now. So yeah, taking yeah. the, cl the classes. Well, I'm in LA. Oh, I'm you're in LA. Oh, LA. LA. Anyway, um, I uh, I I looked at your reel, okay. and uh, you were really funny. Thanks. You you are, but you're uh, you're naturally funny. I mean, you know, you don't even have to try really. Um, so I'll be really interested to see what you do because oh. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure <laughs> that I said that. Uh -oh. um, well, so this is, uh, just from the show, Good Trouble. Um, cool. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, are you Mariana and Callie? I'm sorry. Shit. I'm sorry. Um, nope. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm I'm just, I'm trying to work on not saying I'm sorry so much because apologizing is part of my family. So um, I regret that um, I'm late. So nice to meet you both. Um, yeah, so uh, we are running a little bit low on toilet paper. I thought uh, that free toilet paper would be a fun perk, but turns out people use it a lot more than I thought. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I regret that um, after this roll is done, you're just gonna have to buy it yourself. Okay, well, um, let me show you around. So um, 
I, I know the ad said that you'd each get your own bathroom, but um, the last tenant was living here, was growing psychedelic mushrooms, and uh, there became a little bit of a mold issue. So um, after we evicted him, we just turned it into a closet. Um, I can knock some of the money off of your rent, and you can buy some of those chamber pots on Amazon, though. So you don't have to walk down the hall. But I um, wouldn't poop in it, though, because we have a little bit of a mice issue, and they might try to eat it, depending on your diet, of course. Great. And. <laughs> <laughs> that is very funny. Um, <laughs> what, what a nut. I think we. A nut. <laughs> but, you know, nuts exist. Um, I, uh, let me think. You know, I would love to, uh, to just see you, um, I'm trying to remember the monologue. Now. There's, there's, there, it's just about some turns that, uh, that are available to make. Honestly, I, I really, I hardly have any criticism. I mean, we could have shot that. Yeah. I, I have worked for those people. I, I've done many of the fosters. I'm, oh, I'm, uh -huh. I, I know those writers and they are just fantastic. Oh, so cool. And they would love you. Oh, <laughs> if you had auditioned with that, I'm pretty sure you would have gotten that role. Oh, um, cool. Um, but just to, you know, when, uh, when you're playing, uh, it, I think Chuck would agree with me on this, you know, playing the truth of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, she lays out some fabulous things. Um, Grounding I, it a little bit more? Yes. I wanted to see you sink into some of those things. Like when you say, uh, but uh, the chamber pot thing. Yeah. I mean, that is outrageous. That's it's like, right. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, the chamber pot, and it's like, if you, for instance, if you, if you think that you're, you, you put, as a, a human being, you put the idea, it's like, oh, listen, that bathroom's not available, but you, know, you click in a chamber pot, uh, like on eBay or yeah. wherever, but don't put, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, once you go down that rabbit hole, I want to see you totally go down that rabbit hole in totally in truth. This totally is true. super serious for you. Yes. You yeah. thought you thought this through. Right. Um so I think I think you can actually slow down a little bit. Okay. Um, not so much that you could fall into the trap, which would be easy to, you know, it, I mean, given this, I know I I would chew the furniture a little bit. <laughs> and I know a director would um, probably ask me to chew a little less, but okay. I would love to see it and just, just slow it down just a little bit and okay. just live in the truth and her nuttiness. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm sorry. Are you Mariana and Callie? I'm sorry. Oh shit. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm trying, I'm not sorry. I'm trying to work on saying I'm sorry so much because apologizing is part of my family. So I regret that I'm late. Anyway, so nice to meet both of you. Um, yeah, so I know we're running low on toilet paper. I thought free toilet paper would be a cool perk, but it turns out people use it a lot more than I thought. So I'm sorry that <laughs> I regret that after this roll is done, you're gonna have to buy the next one. Anyway, let me show you around. So um, I know that the ad said you'd each get your own bathroom, but the last tenant who was living here was growing psychedelic mushrooms and there became a little bit of a mold issue. So after we evicted him, we just turned it into a closet. Oh, and I, I can take some of the money off of your rent and you can buy some of these chamber pots on Amazon. So, you know, you don't have to walk down the hall, but you know, I wouldn't poop in it though, because um, we have a little bit of a mice issue and they might try to eat it. Well, depending on your diet, of course. Sounds good.
Great. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. You, you took that note gracefully. Oh, good. Um, which I think is always half the battle in any of these things. Because, you know, when you're, especially when you're working in TV and you, I mean, you're basically shooting a rehearsal all the time. Yeah. So, you know, you have to take a note on your feet and run with it. Um, uh, what, are, what are the last two lines in that? Um, so I can take a little off your rent if you uh -huh. want. So I can take a little off your rent if you want, um, and you can get one of those chamber pots on Amazon oh. so you don't have to walk down the hall. Right, right, right. That was all good. You took that beautifully. Um, super funny. Oh, um, cool. Good work. Can I just ask, um, Hillary, during yeah. it, the way when Annie uh, directed you and said you had time and you went a bit slower with the thoughts, how did you find playing it? Was it easier to deliver than before or, or harder? It's, well, what happens when I slow, because this is a constant note for myself. Yeah. I am yeah. a fast girl. Um, yeah. And, I'll take the class, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like just fast in general. So yeah, um, yeah it, I live in it and I, um, it's more, uh, I'm more, it's, I find it more accessible to find new things rather than steamrolling, yeah. which yeah. Um, steamrolling, yeah, it's got, it's like, ha, you know, habitual. So um, yeah. yeah, I get but to find Because I know what you mean, because I sometimes fall into the same trap when you know doing verse and Shakespeare because wit and speed is great but yeah. what we allowed what the taken Annie's note did and what made it rich and is a bit like similar to with Chelsea's that the different things had different levels of weight for you and I think rather than thinking of going slower in future you just think how important is this one to me how important yeah. is that so don't think of it as a technical thing and speed because comedy you've got the speed you've got the way if you start yeah. thinking of it technically like that it starts becoming artificial. But if there's a real difference between having mold grow and a real difference with having to take a shit in a whatever, which you don't want to do, the different weight will naturally navigate your speed. Do you right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. to different, so they're just slightly different images and they have a different effect and yet the speed will adjust itself. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Does that make Absolutely. sense? Yeah. Absolutely, I agree with Annie, just absolutely yeah. hilarious. I mean, you've got a bit of Annie, um, Hillary's got well, some dead. With that. Do you want to see it one more time with any adjustments and stuff? Because you flew through that, you know? Uh, Are you good? Am I good? Yeah. Oh, is Hillary I'm, good? I'm, Hillary, do you I'm think good. I mean, I got, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Go, go for it. I, go for I, it. Will, I will tell, I mean, I totally get how speed uh, uh, is, is everybody's friend, really, especially in comedy, usually the only note necessary is faster. Yeah. You know, faster, funnier. Yeah. Uh, um, because faster usually is funnier. And it's really funny. I, I just needed you to slow down for me for, for a minute. Yeah. Um, but, you know, now that you did slow it down and other things came through, now you can speed it back up because you're, you're, you're absolutely right about your speed and don't lose that part of yourself that has that kind of speed. It's fantastic to be familiar en enough with material that you can, you can, it's, it's like, you know, the road, so you can go fast with your car. You know, you know, what's interesting. Sometimes what happens is when I read something or, you know, a scene or whatever, there's a musicality of like how I think it goes. And I think there's also a trap that I fall in because I do that. It's, in that inherent like oh I understand what this is and where this goes but it um I don't always create those dips and those changes because it's this idea of like oh I know how th this is a fast thing this is just a boo 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 situation mm -hmm. and so it's kind of it can be super like detrimental for me but then there's something like this where I kind of have an idea and I, I you know know where it goes um yeah so I got comedy's very, comedy's very musical yeah yeah you know, so i think um my favorite director uh, who uh, i worked with in new york is uh, matthew warchus and he 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 sat in his chair and this is the way he watched he he heard things he just 
he just went like that. He closed his eyes and he just, he just listened because uh -huh. it was all rhythm for him. But uh, um, yeah, you're your own little improvisational band. Yeah. Bravo. Keep, hold on to that. You're adorable. You're gonna find work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you, Hillary. Okay. Renata's next. Hi, oh, Renata. Oh, I can't hear you. Hi. There, I think I yeah. There I had, you are. Had my mic off for a minute there. Hi. Hi. <sighs> I'm I'm looking in my notes here for you. Saying, I love your lesbian at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, uh, and you have a very nice reel. I enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. What uh, what piece are you so, doing today? So I'm going to do something uh, from People, Places, and Things. I don't. Play. I don't. Know. What is that? So it's a play. It's written by um, Duncan McMillan. It was done at St. Anne's Warehouse, and. Uh, Oh, I love St. Anne's Warehouse. They're yeah, so good. So good. Um, they yeah, yeah. I fell in love with this play. It's basically um, uh, just had some great roles for women in it. And uh, it's basically a, be dealing with addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. I'll dive in. Awesome. So, as long as you steer clear of people, places, and things, you'll be fine. And you want to hibernate here until you feel safe to face them. <laughs> Who are you being? I know you, sweetheart. You think I can't see when you're lying? At that time, I, I caught you smoking. You sat right there, tears rolling down your cheeks. You swore up and down. And, you know, the only reason you smoked was so you could pretend to be interesting because, unlike Mark, you never had a personality of your own. You think you're this chameleon living hundreds of lives, but you're only just, always just you full of certainty when you discover something and then you never follow through. And this will be no different. We still have that violin somewhere and you insisted on the best. And then you stopped your lessons in half a year. Same with the tennis gear and pets. You changed schools three times, you quit university four times. Evening classes, exercise classes, fad diets, exercise crazes. I mean, just once, I would have liked to have seen you graduate. So you'll have to excuse us if we see this latest lifestyle decision in the context of a thousand abandoned projects. It doesn't suit you, darling. This, this self-righteous, uh, pleasure-denying role, it's boring. I mean, if you want honesty, real, no bullshit, gloves off truthfulness, sweetheart. Alcohol and drugs were the only things that made you any fun. And, and now you, you want closure or whatever they call it in this new cult you're in and you want to say you're sorry and make that heal all the wounds and make us one big happy family. Well, that's just not going to happen. This family is broken forever. And you're doing your best. Okay, so that, that's good. But don't expect a fucking trophy for doing your best. That's the bare minimum you should be doing.
Oh gosh, that was wonderful. <laughs> Just wonderful. And, and what a great monologue. I, I need to read this play now. Um, you, so many times in that, you just completely, you know, singe the heart. It just went straight there. Um, I would love to see, because um, oh. I've been in a few 12 step meetings myself, and uh, I've heard, especially on the Al Anon side of things, if you've ever. Um, and I've just blown my own cover, but that's okay. I don't mind it. But what you ask of the child is for them to have a gloves off uh, telling of the truth. And I think that it that is like the midway point in this monologue. If you mm -hmm. if you build up. I mean, we should know by after a minute and a half that you are engaged in a gloves off thing. This is a face off between you and this is, I mean, I don't know the play, but this, this right. monologue in particular, this is a gloves off conversation with a child who is going down the drain and you are coming back and you are practicing rigorous honesty with them because that's what you need them to do if they're going to survive. There's a lot at stake here. Yeah. Everything is at stake. This child's life. So yeah. you, you have to prove that you've arrived at the point that you now are asking because you can't beg you can't but you're practicing rigorous honesty and it's it's searing anyway i'm not going to say anymore i think you get it yeah. i would like to see you approach the scene again and mm -hmm. show me that yeah okay So as long as you steer clear of people, places, and things, you'll be fine. And you want to hibernate here until you feel safe to face them. <laughs> Who are you being? I know you, sweetheart. You think I can't tell when you're lying. I, I, at that time, I caught you smoking. You sat right there, swore up and down, tears streaming down your cheeks. And you only smoked so you could pretend to be interesting. Because unlike Mark, you never had a personality of your own. You think you're this chameleon living hundreds of lives, but you're only just you. Full of certainty when you first discover something and then you never follow through. And this will be no different. We still have that violin somewhere. And you want it, you insisted on the best. But then you quit the lessons after six months. Same with the tennis gear, pets. You quit school three times. You, you uh, changed school three times. You quit university four times. Evening classes, exercise classes, fad diets, exercise phases. Just once, I would have liked to have seen you graduate. So you'll have to excuse us if we see this latest lifestyle decision in the context of a thousand abandoned projects. This, and it doesn't suit you, darling, this, um, this self-righteous, pleasure-denying role. It's boring. If you want honesty, real, no bullshit, gloves off, truthfulness, sweetheart, the only thing that made you any fun were the drugs and alcohol. And now you want closure or whatever they're calling it in this new cult of yours. And you want to say sorry and make that heal all the wounds and make us one big happy family. Well, that's just not going to happen. This family is broken forever. 
and you're trying your best, okay, good. But don't expect a fucking prize for doing your best. That's the bare minimum you should be doing. Chuck? Um, I, I saw mother, I saw all that going on. Just to, Renato, just a quick question, because I, I don't know the play either. Is, is, is this yeah. a very upper, upper class family, well off family? What's the story? Yes. Yeah, because you really yeah. played that, that thing of having been brought right. up, not being allowed to act in a certain way and you wanted to. And I love that a great deal with her. The only thing I would say, and because you're so good yeah. at it, I just, it's again, it's something I've used, Annie, is like sometimes when you know something really well and you've done it just for shits and giggles, it's worth trying something else to see if that opens up another door for you. And I just yeah. like to take that idea I asked you about the class and the fact that in the way you've grown up, the way people grow up, you don't show that emotion. I would right. just like to see, because the, usually a monologue, I can tell whether... I'm going, usually an audition or whatever, I can tell how it's going to go with the first line I say. And the rest <laughs> of it is either going to be fun or I'm going to be, I really need to get out of here. So the state, how you start is so key. Uh -huh. And I just wonder if you embraced a bit more of that, that thing of you're even about 300% angrier and on your wit's end, but it's still that person that's been taught not to show. Just start there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and okay. And where you're at by the time you get to that, that um, gloves off moment. Right. See where that takes you there. Okay, yeah. To see if that will. Sure. And another thing I wanted to, you know when you said yeah. the quit school, change college, and you came back, was that actually written the script or a stumble? <laughs> it was a stumble. <laughs> but you know what? I, that, good. I was hoping you'd say that because yeah. one thing people should know is that the it doesn't scene matter. isn't auditioning. The scene isn't auditioning, it's the person. And the right. way that happened was that's how you stay. This is just a, a really positive, stay in the moment of your journey. And I don't care about that. In fact, it yeah. made it seem Richard to the point where the writer is probably thinking that might be a good stumble to write him. <laughs> right. So just start right. with the stakes of fire, Renata. Just start with those okay. stakes just a bit. Start it with, okay. And see All right. where that takes you. Where okay. it takes me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, when I heard it the first time, somehow I was, I was so involved in it, but I didn't hear the fact that her thing now is that she's in some kind of cult. So this, this kid's really putting you through. Well, it. she's referring to the cult. She, see, the daughter just got back from rehab, you know, and oh, recovery. Oh, oh. So she's coming to them I saying, you know, I, I, I'm better, I'm, I'm better, and, you know, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to be perfect as long, you know, as I stay away from everybody, and I'll do the right thing. This time, I'm going to do the right thing, and they've been through this a thousand times before. Anyway, right. yeah. So. And I, 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 I asked Chuck to go first, just so I would have a minute to collect my thoughts. Again, this is such a rich monologue, and, uh, I think it's a wonderful note from him to, you know, use that class to sit on it and contain it, contain it, contain it. Still, I, I, I believe my, uh, my, my note was pretty good about, uh, you know, the rigorous honesty thing. But if you add the class thing on top of that, and that you've been through this a million times, you can, you can squeeze that and, 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 and form it. I think maybe, until you get to the part where it's like, excuse us if we don't, if we're not jumping in to fucking save you now, whatever, you, you know what I mean? But yes, I think- Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Chuck's okay. note, all of my note. Uh, um, <laughs> and if yes. you can- uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. We're just, hey, listen, it, this it's is all just, just fun. fun. You know, it's just fun. It's, it's just, just fun. rehearsing and trying like, something ooh, new. Yeah. Ooh, 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 what happens if? Yes. Um, yes. I, yeah. Just no, this is actually a newer monologue for me. So it's like, uh, whatever, you know, I'll just, yeah. whatever just, goes for it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just a sled right. ride down the hill. Enjoy it. Yes.
So as long as you keep clear of people, places, and things, you'll be fine. And you want to hibernate here until you feel safe to face them. Who are you being? I know you, sweetheart. Oh, now I'm trying something different. Like, oh. no, okay, let me try it again. That's, that's We're not to take a, sorry, Annie, go first. No, 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 I was just saying, Telling yeah. you not to think about it. Renata, okay. the, yes. the, the monologue, the beautiful construct of this monologue, it starts with, albeit slightly rhetorical, but it starts with a question and then goes straight into it, right? So right. give yourself time to ask that and think of the reaction before okay. you start. You're not, you know what I mean? It's almost right. like you're playing the question in your head. That's how you start. Yeah, so yeah, give yeah, yourself yeah. time. Yeah. Your gym, right? And um, yeah, and for some reason, you know, I, I, I thought your note meant to go faster in some way or to, anyway, it, it was more of a thought. Not that, it's just know the state you're in when you're starting the, this, yeah? Yes. Gotcha, okay. So, if you stay clear of people, places, and things, you'll be fine and you want to hibernate here until you feel safe to face them. Hmm? <laughs> Who are you being? I know you, sweetheart. You don't think I can see when you're lying. That time I caught you smoking. You swore up and down, tears rolling down your cheeks. And you only smoked so you could pretend to be interesting. Because unlike Mark, you never had a personality of your own. You think you're this chameleon living hundreds of lives, but you're always just you. Full of certainty when you discover something new and then you never follow through, and this will be no different. We still have that violin somewhere, and you insisted on a good one. Same with the tennis gear, pets. You changed schools three times, quit university four times. Evening classes, exercise classes, fad diets, exercise crazes. Just once I would have liked to have seen you graduate. So you're going to have to excuse us if we see this latest lifestyle decision in the context of a thousand abandoned projects. It doesn't suit you, darling. <laughs> this this self-righteous, pleasure-denying role, it's boring. If you want honesty, real, no bullshit, gloves off truthfulness, sweetheart, alcohol and drugs were the only things that made you any interesting at all. And now you want closure or whatever they call it in this new cult of yours. You want to say you're sorry and, and that for that to, to heal all the wounds and make us one big happy family. Well, that's just not going to happen. This family is broken forever. And you, <laughs> you're trying your best, well, that's good. But don't expect a fucking trophy for doing your best. That's the bare minimum you should be doing. Wow. <laughs> That's the performance. That the was audience, different. The, the, the audience walks out of the theater and goes, that girl was fucking awesome. 
Um, no, really, that was that was so. Woo, that was just great. Thank you. Thank you for your note, yeah. Chuck. Really, really. Oh, Renata, both of Renata, you, Renata, like... There were moments where your voice. We we we've talked a lot about voice during the course of this thing, and there's certain moments where your voice would just hit a word. I mean, when you go and play with this now, it's probably going to be a combination of yeah. your earlier take and this take, and you find a balance of the two, yeah? yeah? But what happens is your body now knows there's certain words you just landed in, where the yeah. voice got and whatever, like, and it was uh, beyond yeah. being a mother. It was, do you know what I mean? Just yeah. store that somewhere and start playing and throwing the earlier version with this and just keep exploring yeah. that way. But the state you begin a scene in or a monologue is so key, so you key. know, and then you yeah. go from there. Yeah, you know, lovely. and and I was like, oh, you know, um, I had a, a thought of like, well, uh, you know, I have to start somewhere and end somewhere else. You know what I mean? To to have a yeah. journey as the person through it, right? But yeah. that was really fun to start there and see where yeah. I ended up and just let it play, you know, in a different way. It was Absolutely, great. Annie. Yeah. I, I mean, really whether fun. it's drama or, or comedy, Annie, I mean, it's all, all about stakes, right? Isn't it usually about trying to find the stakes that are highest or that are appropriate also? Yes. And I, that time when you went through it and I tried to, you know, I'm, uh, I'm so engaged as an audience with that. I, I, I had a million ideas and thoughts and all of that, but I thought, uh, the thing that I heard this time through was there's there's a key to me, you know, there's the states and then there's the key that unlocks the next state. And I thought yeah. this time through that it's like, we still have that violin, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's yes. evidence. Yes. We still have that fucking yes. violin that you had to yes. have, the most expensive one in the shop. I, and then, so, you know, that's a trigger. That violin, yeah. that violin that's been sitting in the closet for 20 years. And so it, so you use that to dig in and ramp up to the next thing. And then there was that, and then there was that, and that. So it's, it's yeah. rich. Keep working on that also. It's that's a great it. one point. It's a Thank great you. one for Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Renata. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Renata. Thank, Thank you, Renata. So Thank you Annie. Okay. Um, Who do we have next? Simone. Simone, great. Hello, Simone. Simone, actually. Simone. Simone. Ah, there you yeah. go. Happens <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> um, let me. Uh, oh, I. I mean, I have all nice notes for you. Loved your website. It's really, who, I, I don't know if you did that or whoever did it, but it, it's a, it's a great website, uh, lovely, beautiful, and um, it makes you look super interesting, and uh, uh, I'm excited to uh, see what you do and to work with you a little bit. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, so this is from Orange is the New Black, and uh, it's when a bunch of juvenile delinquents come into the prison and uh, the inmates were asked to scare the pants off of them to avoid these kids going down their similar route. Um, and I don't want anything to do with it, but I end up getting stuck with this girl in the bathroom and attempt uh, kindness at first and then she just explodes. Um, and so here we are. I can tell you a lot of things that would scare you, Dina. I could tell you I'm gonna make you my prison bitch. I could tell you I'm gonna make you my house mouse. That I will have sex with you even if we don't have an emotional connection. That I will do to you what the spring does to the cherry trees, but in a prison way. Pablo Neruda. <laughs> but why bother? You're too tough, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know how easy it is to convince yourself that you're something you're not. I mean, you could do it on the outside. You could just keep moving and make yourself so busy that you don't have time to face who you really are. But you're weak. I'm like you, Dina. I'm weak too. 
I can't get through this without having someone to love, without having someone to touch? Is it because sex numbs the pain or is it because I'm some evil fuck monster? I don't know. But what I do know is that I was somebody before I came in here. I was somebody with a life that I chose for myself. And now, now it's just getting through the day without crying. And I'm scared. I'm still scared. I'm scared I'm not myself in here, and I'm scared that I am. Other people aren't the scariest part of prison, Dina. It's coming face to face with who you really are, because once you're behind these walls, there's nowhere to run, even if you could run. The truth always catches up with you, Dina, and it's the truth that's going to make you her bitch. That's it. Wow. Wow. There's a lot in there too. Um, I, uh, I found what, what was interesting to me in that is that, you know, she starts out trying to uh, scare her a little bit and then it, it becomes almost a confessional. And you keep trying to rest it back into another thing by making the comparisons between what it's really like on the inside and as compared to the outside. And then it come, becomes so personal for you because this is the way it is. I mean, you're, you're, you're telling truth, but you're also seeking comfort in trying to connect with somebody because you say that's that's everything to you connecting i think you know um and women in particular we you know for us connection is much more important than actual sex i mean sex is a way to connect but and so you you're you're trying to connect with her yeah. Um, and it, it, you know, it's, it's very compelling. Chuck, do you have some, do you have some thoughts on this before we guide her I, through I, doing it? Yeah, I, I, I just, I always think, I'm thinking of it technically is that I always, when people have a list, Simone, you start off with like a series of three or four questions in a row, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really important to, ask yourself why you're asking. They're all different questions, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and to avoid it becoming a thing you do to get onto the meaty part, you know what I mean? To avoid it becoming the introduction to the seed, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I always say, when you have that, always try and really have a strong image of the person you're asking those things to. You know, they all have a different weight, you know? What if I told you I could do to you what the spring does to flowers? There's a very different tone from saying, what if I said I'd make you my bitch? That's the very different, those are two, I mean, yes, it's in the same world, but two different tones. Does that make sense? So I think the way to do that is to really have a strong image of the effect you're having on the person you're playing it to. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the choice of it. And the choice to go from saying, using the word, I could make you my bitch, to the choice of saying, I'm going to get a bit poetic on you and embrace that a bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then also the big thing I'll say is th it, it seems like you're, you're, this is a very recent is this the first time you meet you? What's the story with her? Have you, you have, so this is the, I mean, think of what you're saying to the person that you've just met for the first time. So it goes back to what Annie says. It's like, you start off being this thing and, and then you end up being a confessional and showing quite vulnerability. But keep in mind always that this is the first time you're talking to this person. So I think this is one of those monologues that really, and it'd be easier in the scene because the other actor would be giving it back to you. But if you were using this to audition, really have a sense of this person taking in what you're saying to them, you know? And there's a, there's a point in the speech where it goes from you being the talker, not the talker, going from you being the instigator to the person that needs to be listened to, which are two very different things. Does that make sense? 
I'm so sorry. really find where that happens and be very careful of lists becoming lists. There's a reason why you say one thing and then you build on it and then you go, and what's that doing to you emotionally? Those are the two things I'd say to you, okay? And remember, you're talking to her for the first friggin' time. Yeah. Don't get to, you're not yet. Okay. Friend, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Annie? Yes. Chakuti's much more technical than I am. I'm like, who do I feel? <laughs> yeah, but, but it's the same, it's sort of like the same thing in, 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 yeah, in those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, thank you. You were very helpful in articulating what I was trying to, which was, you know, that, that wonderful turn w when she quotes Neruda, because I think they're hiding out in the bathroom, which is, you know, a place where a lot of stuff goes down in the prison. Um, and, uh, you were, you were showing her stuff and it's like, you try to scare her a little bit and then you use that. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to show you how tough I can be. And then guess what? I'm a fucking intellectual. So what about that? What's your excuse? How did you get here? You know, so all of that, it's just, but I think the main thing, uh, as Chakuti said is, you're talking to this person for the first time and it's not a list but you are you are wired up on it you're damaged you're damaged but you're in control this is a person who's just uh, the the person you're talking to is somebody who's only i'm guessing been in the prison an hour and you are you are given them some truth. So, and uh, she, she seems to understand the power of it full well, cause she's been a newbie there herself. So uh, I, I'd love to see you reveal yourself again to this person, thinking about all those notes. Take a minute if you need to. I could tell you a lot of things that would scare you, Dina. I could tell you I'm going to make you my prison bitch. I could tell you I'm going to make you my house mouse. That I will have sex with you even if we don't have an emotional connection. That I will do to you what the spring does to the cherry trees, but in a prison way. Pablo Neruda. But why bother? You're too tough, right? Yeah, I know. I know how easy it is to convince yourself that you're something you're not. You could do it on the outside. You can just keep moving and make yourself so busy that you don't have time to face who you really are. But you're weak. I'm like you, Dina. I'm weak too. I can't get through this without having someone to love, without having someone to touch. Is it because sex- Simone, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's just so huge, that moment of, I get it, you're weak. I'm, yeah. I'm weak. I can't, that's the, that's the big compare. Do, do you see how you sort of glided it's over, over and you got I lost in the speech? I said that in my head. Yeah, I said that in my head. So just take it back a little bit and lead to that, you know what I mean? But that's that's yeah. the moment, you know? Okay. Yeah. But also, it, it comes off you scaring her. So, but, and so then that word, I'm weak, after you've just scared somebody really bad, and then then you say, but you see, I, I'm weak. It's like, really? I'm not understanding that you're weak because you just scared the piss out of me. Hmm. So, it's it's a manipulation it's a beautiful manipulation it's and it's it's contrary it's a contrary idea anyway it's i don't want to over talk it overthink it but but uh, go, go from the top again and i think even the highest stake at the beginning just really think yourself a scaring schoolyard bully surprise yourself when you use naruda you know just Really enjoy the bully thing and see where that takes you for when you actually open up to her, okay? okay? 
I could tell you a lot of things that would scare you, Dina. I could tell you I'm going to make you my prison bitch. I could tell you I'm going to make you my house mouse. That I will have sex with you, even if we don't have an emotional connection. That I will do to you what the spring does to the cherry trees, but in a prison way. Pablo Neruda. But why bother? You're too tough, right? Yeah. I know how easy it is to convince yourself that you're something you're not. You can, you can do it on the outside. You can just keep moving and make yourself so busy that you don't have time to face who you really are. But you're weak. I'm like you, Dina. I'm weak too. I can't get through this without having someone to love, without having someone to touch. Is it because sex numbs the pain or is it because I'm some evil fuck monster? I don't know. But what I do know is that I was somebody before I came in here. I was somebody with a life that I chose for myself and now, now it's just getting through the day without crying. And I'm scared. I'm still scared. I'm scared I'm not myself in here and I'm scared that I am. Other people aren't the scariest part of prison, Dina. It's coming face to face with who you really are. Because once you're behind these walls, there's nowhere to run, even if you could run. The truth always catches up with you, Dina. And it's the truth that's going to make you her bitch. Thank you. <laughs> Annie? Here's my thoughts. I felt like, I, I thought, I felt like it was that, that the real way that that scene, I don't know, I didn't see, I didn't see that episode, but I felt like I, when I watched that show, I always felt like, you know, people would only have a couple of seconds to say anything private to each other before they're interrupted. And I felt like, or you know, everything was like sort of in whispers and things were like passed in the hall. So I, I wondered what it would be like if it was done at a whisper, as if you were hiding from somebody and imagining that somebody's gonna interrupt you or correct you or yank you someplace. And if so, if you could sort of um, compress everything to like a whisper and that thing that you're going to be found out because that's, that's the way it is in prison. You, you lose yourself because you don't, you don't have any freedom. You can't choose your life. People are choosing every minute for you in your cell. Go to the dining room. Now you can go outside. You can't make any choices. And this is what it is. I don't know if it's this or it's that. Or it's because I'm driven by this. But I'm going to tell you what it's like. And that, it, to me, when it becomes a whisper and it starts, it just, then you, then you just start to feel how confined and those walls and all of that. I could, do, 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 do we have time for her to? We'll, we'll, we'll make time. It's all about you keeping you to the end and you're going to stay to the end. So that's okay. great. Simone, and I think a part of way of helping you with that, Annie's note is there is a point as I was listening to you do it there where you're telling her very much at the beginning, but there's a point after around the time you say you're scared that it almost feels like you're saying it for yourself, for her to hear, but also for yourself. So. Does that make sense? I don't, I don't want you to get indulgence in it because you're not that kind of actor, but that sort of sense of you say something and it's, it's a self real like, yeah, it's like Annie said, you finally got time to actually say, and you're discovering those things about yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so it's not just playing the, the 
on her but you start realizing what these fucking walls do to you and how the whatever and then you're back to her for you know you're actually truth bitch you know what i mean just find those moments as you're saying it and just let what you're saying start having more of an effect on you also as well as telling her maybe again rooting it in seeing someone really listening to you and you're actually the, it's the moment of it the moment of thinking this is what this place does to you this is what this place does to you this is what after you've dropped the facade of the bully yeah just mm-hmm. try that now and take that note of annie's and just think of a bit like you know when you you know that you don't have as much time as you think you don't see what that does to you see what that does literally does to your breathing and diaphragm okay just yeah. try it yeah Great. just remember this is we're just we're, we're playing oh there's, i love it there's no right or wrong or it's just it's just play yeah no i love it um also i live in the loudest neighborhood ever so sorry for all that <laughs> okay. i can tell you a lot of things that would scare you dina i could tell you i'm gonna make you my prison bitch I could tell you I'm going to make you my house mouse, that I will have sex with you even if we don't have an emotional connection, that I will do to you what the spring does to the cherry trees, but in a prison way. Pablo Neruda. But why bother? You're too tough, right? Yeah. I know how easy it is to convince yourself that you're something you're not. I mean, you could, you could do it on the outside. You can just keep moving and make yourself so busy that you don't have time to face who you really are. But you're weak. I'm like you, Dina. I'm weak too. I can't get through this without having someone to love, without having someone to touch? Is it because sex numbs the pain or or is it because I'm some evil fuck monster? I don't know. But what I do know is that I was somebody before I came in here. I was somebody with a life that I chose for myself and now now it's just getting through the day without crying. And I'm scared. I'm still scared. I'm scared I'm not myself in here and I'm scared that I am. Other people, not the scariest part of prison, Dina. It's coming face to face with who you really are. Once you're inside these walls, there's nowhere to run. Even if you could run, the truth always catches up with you, Dina, and it's the truth that's going to make you her bitch. Addie? Thank you, guys. (laughs) How did that feel? So good. (laughs) (laughs) So good. To just the boundaries that you unintentionally set on yourself to just come down you know I've been doing that monologue for a little while so it's easy to kind of get into um well those notes Annie gave you about this is what prison like that's so much part of the preparation for is again it's like I've said it I keep pushing this book uh, Taming the Cyclops by Ellen Novak talk so much about how you walk into that room you you should those moments in the waiting room and stuff that you already you build the world of it because all they have is you to build the world in a monologue not a scene you know what i mean and that note from annie about intensity and grabbing time because you're an intelligent actor it did all sorts of different things to you apart from just speak soft softer do you know what i mean um, so that that's how you approach it, build the world around it. Any any further thoughts thoughts before we move on? <laughs> uh, uh, no, I just you know it's just the general thing. It's been a long time actually since I've I've been in an acting class. I mean I, um, although it, I I I've worked a lot, so I feel like I'm in I, I kind of in class, but I forget those rules about you know the general. Where am I? What do I want? And uh, 
um, the, the where am I in the bathroom of a prison, you know, tells you so much. And if you can work on those things right before you go in or before you and now, if you tape it, but uh, that, that was just, it was wonderful to watch you find And you were so place. dangerous. There was someone really dangerous and broken. Beautiful yeah. work. We must move on, Simone. Thank you for um, taking the time. Come back again. You're beautiful <laughs> and right. you're gonna work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Who's next up? Uh, Karina. Karina. Is Karina there? Did, did we go on so long we lost somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Karina? Oh, oh there she is. There she is. Hi, Karina. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I was interested to see your resume. and You, you do a little bit of everything. And you dance, you teach. Wow. You're a, a, a triple threat. <laughs> I will, I'm, I'm excited to see what you do. Thank you. Uh, today I brought in Carol from Oleana by David Mamet. And in this scene, in this point of the play, I've come into John's office, who is my professor, and he's up for tenure. And I filed a complaint with the tenure committee. And John has invited me into his office in an attempt to convince me to take the complaint away. And this is what happens. How can you deny it? You did it to me, here. You did. You confess. You love the power to deviate, to invent, to transgress, to transgress whatever norms have been established for us. And you think it's charming to question within yourself this taste to mock and destroy. But you should question it, professor. And you pick those things that you feel advance you, publication, tenure, and the steps to get them you call harmless rituals. And you perform those rituals, although you say it is hypocrisy, but to the aspirations of your students, of hard-working students who come here, who break themselves to come here. You have no idea what it cost me to come to this school. You mock us. You call education hazing from your so protected, so elitist seat. You hold our confusion as a joke and our hopes and efforts with it. And then you sit there and you ask, what have I done? And ask me to understand that you have aspirations too. But I tell you, I tell you that you are vile and you are exploitative. And if you possessed one ounce of the inner honesty that you describe in your book, you can look inside yourself and see those things that I see. And you would find revulsion equal to that of my own. Good day. Ooh, that's a blisterer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, bravo. Uh, a couple of thoughts. Um, where are you? you are, you're in his office. It takes a lot of balls to come in, no matter, you know, how righteous Joan of Arc you are, to come in someone else's office and call them out as you've already blown the whistle on them. Um, and uh, it speaks to the courage uh, of all these people. That language is a little elevated. I I I found that in in, in the beginning it was a little elevated. I mean, it, it's theatrical. So I think the 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 work you have to do is to make that sort of heightened language in the beginning more. You know, she just 
what I love about it is that she just levels it out there. It's kind of like in the earlier scene where the mother is talking to the daughter who has addiction issues. You know, um, clearly maybe the man does too. But when you're speaking truth to power like that, and then she calls him out on it, you know, it's sort of the, 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 the second little mountain you get to in this piece is when she says, this was in your book, mm -hmm. okay? You're supposed to be the one who's calling out other people and telling us what truth is and you have done this thing. So these, these uh, accusations that you're leveling are, she's, uh, she's, she's really carrying a backpack of TNT into this room. I mean, you are like, you, you, you know, suicide bomber that's got the thing strapped to you and you're willing to blow up yourself too. I would love to see you do it again with that. And just, just because I'm not seeing you in the theater, even if this piece was a theater piece, I'm seeing you on screen. So I'm sort of reacting as if you're, you know, on TV or the big screen. If you, if, if you can bring it, bring that elevated language in a little bit, Mm -hmm. and let it come out of your heart and truth and jet and level him. Mm -hmm. I want to see you, this, this, this articulate girl who's going to take down this big professor. And Karina, one of the ways to help with that elevate, that sense of elevation Annie's talking about, it doesn't have to be at the beginning. I think you've fallen into a pattern with your twos. Mm. You know, your TOs to, you know, the speech and you're saying to, to, and it's a pattern when actually everything is different to do this, to do this. I'm not saying you take all that time to do it, but they're all different things. Don't, there's a, there was a very uh, eloquent pattern with the twos, which stops you from actually living the truth of it because it's becoming a speech. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's also, it's written brilliantly that way because you're not, you're not yet at the point later on in the speech, like Annie's saying, where you level it. Mm -hmm. So build the world for yourself. Mm -hmm. This is about coming into this powerful man's thing and building yourself up to level him up. So use that repetition. Use those. She doesn't have to say two, two, two so many times. She could have done one of them and then laid into it. She doesn't. So why is that? Mm -hmm. You know, find the truth of it. Finding the specificity of it. Does that make sense? That's so that it doesn't become a, a, a speech pattern. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, go for it. How can you deny it? You did it to me here. You did. You confess. You love the power to... I, I want to stop you again. I know you've got a lot of notes in your head and everything, but uh, again, this, this starts with a question. Let it be real. How? Because obviously he's just said, you know, I didn't do that. Mm. And it's like, how, how can you deny this? I, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's got to be a real question that start. It, it's just, it's like, there is no denying it. Um, uh, so, uh, if you could, if if you could just start again with with that, and just and I I would love to see you study his face a little bit because it's he's not saying anything back. So I mean, obviously he's doing something. So I would love to see in you what you are. I mean, it probably blows your mind a little bit that he can sit. You know when you're sitting in the face of somebody who's just lying, it's, it's kind of astonishing, isn't it? So I, I'd love to see you, uh, his, his reactions land on you and what your reaction to that is, mm -hmm. so, if you don't mind. Thank you. How can you deny it? You did it to me here. 
You did. You confess. You love the power to deviate, to invent, to transgress, to transgress whatever norms have been established for us. And you think it's charming to question within yourself this taste to mock and destroy, but you should question it, professor. And you pick those things which you feel advance you, publication, tenure, and the steps to get them you call harmless rituals. And you perform those rituals, although you say it is hypocrisy. But to the aspirations of your students, of hardworking students who come here, who break themselves to come here, you have no idea what it cost me to come to this school. You mock us. You call education hazing from your so protected, so elitist seat. You hold our confusion as a joke and our hopes and efforts with it. And then you sit there <laughs> and you ask, what have I done? And ask me to understand that you have aspirations too. But I tell you, I tell you, that you are vile and you are exploitative. And if you possessed one ounce of the inner honesty that you describe in your book, then you can look inside yourself and see those things that I see. And you would find revulsion equal to that of my own. Good day. Very nice. Shakuti? I thought the adjustments were great. Um, really, really, we started seeing it. I, I would love, I think she's angrier. Mm -hmm. I think she's angry. I think, I think you're being too polite. I'm not saying start shouting. I think she's angrier and she's finally found her voice. Mm. She's finally found her. You use the word vile and revulsion in two different, like you're enjoying it. You're finally saying it. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want you to do it one more time. Don't worry about whether this is the take you would use or not. And just be angrier. And there's a point after you've asked the question, like Annie said, that where you realize, oh my God, this is what you think you are. It's not just a, a thought, whatever. It's like, you, suck. you really think you're this. Use, just use that. And I just want to see you angrier. But really see him and actually go, oh my God, I see you for what you are finally. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And try that. Just, just be angry. And See I where that takes you. Also, I think a lot of that anger comes from the part that he, he's cast himself as the victim. Yeah. As perpetrators often do. It's like, obviously, he said, listen, you're not going to do this for me because my tenure's at stake. And I mean, you know, I, I really deserve this. And I, you know, you, you wouldn't want to take advantage of that after what he's done to you. So you are fully vested to uh, go after him. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she found, you know, hey, me, it's the Me Too movement. Go, you go, just, yeah, just, uh, you're, you're furious and you have, a, 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 you know, a, a march of, of a million women in Washington behind you saying that you're within your rights to do it finally. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, when you have that instinct to run away from your emotions, which a lot of actors do, which is to laugh, mm -hmm. go laugh, don't do it, find something else. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. it. How can you deny it? You did it to me here. You did. You confess. You love the power. But again, that mm. he's denied he, he did it. You can't believe he's denying it. He's mm. like every freaking man, right? Just let loose. He's, he's, he's confessed it. He's confessed it. 
Yeah. He, no, you did it. You did it to me here. You confessed it. You said it already. What the fuck? Yeah. What? You, you know, you, so I think, yeah, anyway, enough said. How can you deny it? You did it to me here. You did. You confess. You love the power to deviate, to invent, to transgress, to transgress whatever norms have been established for us. And you think it's charming to question within yourself this taste to mock and destroy. But you should question it, Professor. And you pick those things that you feel advance you, publication, tenure, and the steps to get them you call harmless rituals. And you perform those rituals, although you say it is hypocrisy, but to the aspirations of your students, of hard-working students who come here, who break themselves to come here, you have no idea what it cost me to come to this school. You mock us. You call education hazing from your so protected, so elitist seat. You hold our confusion as a joke and our hopes and efforts with it. And then you sit there and you ask, what have I done? And ask me to understand that you have aspirations too. But I tell you, I tell you that you are vile and you are exploitative. And if you possessed one ounce of the inner honesty that you describe in your book, you could look inside yourself and see those things that I see. And you would find revulsion equal to that of my own. Good day. I know we're running over time, but I, I just, I want, I want to see you angry. And can you start, when you start, right? Annie, I'll, I'll throw it over to you. But when you start, can you just start with an explosive scream, like literally just ex explode and launch into this and do this whole scene in half the time? Land it, but just start there like a big fuck you in fact start with a big fuck you and then take the scene through okay annie sorry do you have no anything? no no exactly no yeah. I, listen i got nothing to do today we can we can take as much time as we like as far as i'm concerned so while while we're on the playground let's play it's a great note have fun with it <laughs> Fuck you! How can you deny it? You did it to me. Here, you, you did. You confess you love the power to deviate, to invent, to transgress, to transgress whatever norms have been established for us. And you think it's charming to question within yourself this taste to mock and destroy. But you should question it, professor. And you pick those things which you feel advance you publication, tenure, and the steps to get them you call harmless rituals. And you perform those rituals, although you say it is hypocrisy, but to the aspirations of your students, of hard-working students who come here, who break themselves to come here. You have no idea what it cost me to come to this school. You mock us from your so protected, so elitist seat. You hold our confusion as a joke and our hopes and efforts with it. And then you sit there and you ask, what have I done? And ask me to understand that you have aspirations too. But I tell you, I tell you that you are vile and you are exploitative 
And if you possessed one ounce of the inner honesty that you describe in your book, you could look inside yourself and see those things that I see. And you would find a revulsion equal to that of my own. Good day. Standing O. <laughs> Do you say, I mean, that's, if you just, Annie, sorry, I'll leave it to you. Annie. Oh, no, 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 it was your fabulous note. And you know, I mean, how many times do you get the direction, start hot? Yeah. <laughs> As if you were gonna, in this case, it's not like you leave yourself no place to go doing that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because then you got to slow down at the end and just, it was so powerful. And Karina, what was beautiful about that is when the tears came, they weren't in, they were angry. Those are those are the tears that really happen in life. When you're so angry, you cry. When you're so, you know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, woe is me tears. It was the anger that brought those tears out. And those are real. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. stakes. Always start with the stakes. Always think of the world you're coming into. Always think what the person has just said to you beforehand. And ask yourself honestly what 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 it is you're trying to express, like Annie said, it's a big fuck you to every man like you. Do you know what I mean? And then you get there, yeah? So lovely work, lovely work. All right, uh, who do we have next? We have uh, Denise. Hello. Hi, Hi Denise. How, are how are you? you? <laughs> good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Upright Citizens Brigade, huh? Pianist. Yeah, I did that for a bit. <laughs> They're fun. They are. OK. So um, this is from uh, Jake's Women by Neil Simon. What you love is to love women. You love to have women love you. You even love to love women who love you because you're standoffish, but intimacy, that you're afraid of. I think you're afraid to let a woman in so close, so deep inside you, that she'll gobble you up and you'll lose whatever it is you think you are. You always have to be the master, Jake. The master, the conductor, the director, and the attorney general. You don't think it's strange that you sit around here thinking about women and making up what they say to you? And then you think up that we made up, that we came over here on our own? I, how much more control do you want? They love you, they leave you, they come back to you, they worry about you, they live, they die, they grow up, they fall down, they fight for you, they cry for you. It's a three ring circus in here and all the horses and lions and elephants are women. You're the star of the show, Jake. You're the one they shoot out of cannon and you fly around the tent with an American flag in your mouth. And the women go crazy and faint and they take them away to the hospitals. The trouble is, it is very hard to get close to a man who is flying around in a tent with a flag in his mouth. That's what I'd call trouble with intimacy. That's fun. Simon, <laughs> Simon is sort of the, uh, he's the master of musical comedy language. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean musical comedy, I mean mm -hmm. musical and comedic. To me, I, especially for comedy, I, o I always see the script as uh, like uh, written out like music. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you're a musician. Um, I, I would love to see, especially in the, in the beginning, I felt you missed the music of it. And if you miss the music of, of that beginning, uh, you love this, you love that, you love this, and, and the blah, 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 blah. There, there's, a, there's a thing that it, I felt that you, I mean, it's, it's the key to the rest of the scene because it, mm -hmm. it has to start out that way. You got there, but mm -hmm. it didn't start out this way. And I think, you know, again, this is a woman finally getting to announce her anthem. Let me tell you what's the problem with you, okay? Because you're mm -hmm. flying around the fucking circus tent with a flag <laughs> in your mouth. But you've got to, you've got to have, 
you've got you've got to start out because with with Simon especially I think it's the uh, the music is always inherent so I'd like to hear you to try and start out with that did Chakuti do you agree do you, did you hear that I totally agree it's the mm -hmm. very beginning the very beginning it started a little bit like you were you were given a speech you know yeah. and you have to we, we have to know where you're coming from what you've put up with this guy and your attitude towards him to stop that from being a speech and i think it is and i think when you have those things you'll be able to say you do this you do that i'm tired of it do, 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 do what i'm saying so so really uh i didn't know who you were talking to till well into the speech when actually i'd like to know your feelings about this person at least your feelings at the beginning of the speech towards this person does okay. that make sense mm -hmm. yeah i think yeah. It, it, yeah it's like uh it it is a national anthem of your diatribe against him and it, you know you need to start start out with some brass so that you can get to the timpani at the end okay mm -hmm. yeah so just have an opinion about how you feel about it <laughs> yeah. okay mm -hmm. what you love is to love women you love to have women in love with you you even love to love women who love you because you're standoffish. But intimacy, that you're afraid of. I think you're afraid to lose control in a relationship with a woman. To let a woman in so close, so deep inside of you, that she'll gobble you up and you'll lose whatever you think you are. You'll always have to be the master, Jake. The master, the conductor, the director, and the attorney general. You don't think it's strange that you sit around here thinking about women and making up what they say to you, and then you think up that we made up that we came here on our own? Hey, come on, how much more control do you want? They love you, they leave you, they come back to you, they worry about you, they live, they die, they grow up, they fall down, they fight for you, they cry for you. It's a three ring circus in here, and all the horses and lions and elephants are women. And you're the star of the show, Jake. You're the one they shoot out of the cannon and you fly around the tent with an American flag in your mouth and the women go crazy and faint and they take them away to the hospitals. The trouble is, it's very hard to get close to a man who's flying around a tent with a flag in his mouth. That's what I call trouble with intimacy. What, what I heard this time through was that what you're you're answering something that may since I haven't read the script, I'm not sure, but it seems that you're you're answering. He he's like, I just want to be close to somebody. I just want intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's like that's not what he wants. He <laughs> wants he wants mastery over. You know, he wants to just. It, it, he wants his ego fulfilled mm -hmm. and there's something in the it, it, so there's something in the beginning and something in the end about closeness and intimacy and stuff mm -hmm. these are really these are hot button topics to bring up with men because of course you know they're less good at intimacy than we are um mm -hmm. and you're calling him on it so it can be hurtful mm -hmm. um it, it still seemed in the beginning to be a little, a little wishy-washy. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like you can, um, you can be a little less wishy-washy. Finally, you're, you, you know, he sounds like a real dick, you yeah. know, but for some reason, w women like him and they, they keep coming in and they, you know, <laughs> they love him, they, they complain about him. Blah, 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 blah. It's just, you don't even get it, why? why he's mm -hmm. got that power but because women are confused by that kind of thing and i think you can um right and in and in this i'm his i'm his older sister so i've never actually been the uh, target of his romantic failure but i've been watching him right. fail at relationships all his life and then complain about oh why doesn't this work i'm like you idiot yeah you see what you're doing now is an opinion about it and I mm -hmm. think there is a crescendo when you think about the musicality of it. By the time you get three-ring circus in here, this woman's at the end of her 
tell them they're here, they come, they go, they go like, so let's see your opinion. Mm -hmm. Let's see how, as you're saying, you're not just telling him, you're living through it. It's like this every single day, you know? Mm -hmm. So cut, cut the corset off a little bit there, Denise. You know what I mean? Let, okay. Be angry at your brother. <laughs> Right now, also, you're remember, you're the, you're the older sibling. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You've been wanting to tell him this since he was five. Yes. And you it's know? your space also. These women are coming into your space. So just, yeah, mm -hmm. be the big sister of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> give, give him what for. Okay. What you love is to love women. You love to have women in love with you. You even love to love women who love you because you're standoffish, but intimacy, that's you're afraid of. I think you're afraid to lose control in a relationship with a woman, to let a woman in so deep, so close that she'll gobble you up and you'll lose whatever you think you are. You always have to be the master, Jay, the master, the conductor, the director, and the attorney general. I, don't you think it's strange that you sit around here thinking about women and making up what they say to you? And then you think up that we made up that we came over here on our own. Come on, how much more control do you want? They love you, they leave you, they come back to you, they worry about you, they live, they die, they grow up, they fall down, they fight for you, they cry for you. It's a three ring circus in here and all the lions and horses and elephants are women. You're the star of the show, Jake. You're the one they shoot out of the cannon and you fly around this tent with an American flag in your mouth and all the women go crazy and faint and they take them away to hospitals. The trouble is, it's very hard to get close to a man who's flying around a tent with a flag in his mouth. That's what I call trouble with intimacy. <laughs> Scary, that. that's good. Okay. Danny? Oh, nothing. I just, you know, when you're hearing these things first time, um, that she, that she uh, reuses the imagery of flying around. It's, because it's very hard to be intimate with somebody who's 150 feet up in the air flying around with a flag. I just heard that for the first time and I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think the whole thing is about intimacy. Um, but can, I, can I throw something at you? Um, yeah. Just to get the fun out of it. You know that stereotype of the Italian mom that does this and yes, you know that, that stereotype? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah. playful, mm -hmm. bossy, loud Italian mom and then you do that and then, can you just try this? Yeah. That extreme version in your of what you think is extreme. The whole thing is a surface. They come, they go, and don't, don't, don't give. And then know when you land. You know, know when you land. No, you're in, you're you're afraid. You don't want intimacy. You dumb fuck. You think you want that. And you know, just put that put that stereotype on in the way you deliver. Be a bit louder than you want to be. Also, just okay. Just for a, a game. Yeah. Okay. What you want is to love women. You want to have, li you love to have women in love with you. You even love to love women who love you because you're so standoffish. But intimacy, ah, that's you're afraid of. I think you're afraid to lose control in a relationship with a woman, to let a woman in so close, so deep inside you that she'll gobble you up and you'll lose whatever you think you are. You always have to be the master, Jake. The master, the conductor, the director, the attorney general. Don't you think it's strange that you sit around here thinking about women and then you make up, you know, what we say to you. And then you think up that we make up that we came over here on our own. Come on, how much more control do you want? They love you, they leave you, they come back to you, they worry about you, they live, they die, they grow up, they fall down, they fight for you, they cry for you. It's a three ring circus in here and all the horses and lions and elephants are women. And you're the star of the show, Jake. You're the one they shoot out of the cannon and you fly around the circus tent with an American flag in your mouth. And all the women go crazy and they faint and they take them away to hospitals. The trouble is it's very hard to get close to a man who's flying around in a tent with a flag in his mouth. That's what I call trouble with intimacy. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's, it's, it's the frustration. I mean, that might seem extreme to you, mm -hmm. but when you see a speech like this, it's just attacking. You can see him literally going further, further, in it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, when you do it, you'll find a nuance to bring more of your voice into it. But sometimes it's good to work from the outside in with this, a stereotype of mm -hmm. what it is. And actually, you weren't louder, but you, you although I gave you the note, you thought you, you, what you were was more direct in landing things with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Annie. yeah, it's more Thoughts. intense. <laughs> Absolutely. It was, I, I mean, I, I, think, uh, I, I think if you'd come in with that, uh, you, you, uh, they, you would get the job then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's like, well, yeah, that's what we want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, okay. That was just, that was just right. And I, I agree with Takuti. I, um, I always like to work from the outside in, especially, uh, especially in comedy. You know, comedy. you can always pare it down. Yeah. But if unless you, anyway. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really lovely. All right. Uh, Maya. Did I say that right? Maya, Maya, Maya. Hey, oh, wait, hold, oh, hold on. Uh, You're up, Maya. You're up. Yeah. <laughs> here I am. We can't see you. Oh, oh there, there you are. are. Hey. Here I am. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's Maya. You were Maya. Right Maya. Maya. Okay. Maya. Yeah. I, uh, I loved I loved your uh, I loved your website. It's gorgeous and it um it, it's super easy to navigate. You know you can click. I, I just uh, I don't even have one myself, and I was thinking, wow, she's got a really good one. I should talk to her about that. Anyway, it's a great reel, and I I loved your I I loved your acting in it and everything. And uh, welcome. I'm I'm thrilled to watch your work. Uh, Thank you. I'm so excited. Um, so I'm going to be doing um, Emma's speech from Stupid Fucking Bird by Aaron Posner. And um, uh, it's an adaptation of um, uh, The Seagull by Chekhov. Mm. And um, this, uh, she's actually speaking directly to the audience, um, which doesn't happen in The Seagull. But her son has just been like railing against the forms of theater she represents and he wants new forms. So he's just been like going off. And then I come in and talk to the audience. <laughs> okay. When he was little, I used to make my hand die. He'd be screaming or whatever. And if he wouldn't stop, I'd tell him he was hurting me. I'd tell him, I'd tell him he was killing me. Actually, that's what I said. I said, you don't want to kill mommy, do you? And then I'd make my hand die like this. And then he'd get this little look on his face and he'd stop. It was very effective. I can't help but think now that that was not perhaps perfect parenting, but it worked and I needed things, anything that worked. I was 18 when I got married, 18 fucking years old, hardly out of diapers, to my first famous leading man, Dixon, Dixon McCready. Remember him? No, me neither, Jesus. The way he said his own name should have tipped me off. Dixon, Dixon McCready, rhymes with CD. Ugh. Sexual harassment that just worked out, we called it. I thought that was so funny and charming at the time, like we beat the system. What did all those adults who thought they knew better, that told us to wait, that told me I was too young, what did they know? I knew it was true love, it was perfect. What could possibly go wrong? I asked my mother during one of our stupid, endless fights. What could possibly go wrong? Well, as it turned out, things, many things could go wrong. 
and did wonderfully, exceptionally wrong. And at 22, I had my first hit movie, my first tabloid scandal, and I was a divorced mother of a two-year-old son. And the universe said, well, good luck with that. Uh, well, I, I don't know this play, but uh, I, I certainly enjoyed her story. I was, uh, I was trying to place myself in, in the real audience that, the, that she was talking to. And I, uh, I thought, uh, I'm, I'm part of a, a women's circle. There are eight of us. And uh, we, uh, we run it kind of like a 12-step meeting. Everybody gets to talk about what's happening with them. And, uh, and nobody interrupts. And occasionally, these fantastic monologues of personal experience come up. And you're just like, <laughs> well, people, people, people I've known for, you know, 15 years. And I thought, oh, that's kind of what this is. And I, I would love, I would love to see you play that as if your audience was the other seven women who know you, but may not know this story about you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe you've had a couple of cocktails <laughs> you, you, you know, uh, I would just, I would just love to see, I would just love to see that loose girl. And this is, I mean, just, this is honestly, you're a lovely, lovely actress. This is kind of just for my pleasure. <laughs> I just, I just like to spend a minute and hear her tell her story um, at, uh, as somebody I love and admire and I'm a little afraid of. <laughs> But I'd love to hear that story. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> oh. When he was little, I used to make my hand die. He'd be screaming or whatever. And if he wouldn't stop, I'd tell him he was hurting me. <laughs> I tell him, I tell him he was killing me, actually. <laughs> I said, you don't want to kill mommy, do you? And then I make my hand die like this. <sighs> and then he'd get this little look on his face and he'd stop. I can't help but think that that was not perhaps perfect parenting. <laughs> but it worked and I needed things, anything that worked. I was 18 when I got married, 18 fucking years old, hardly out of diapers <laughs> to my first famous leading man, Dixon, Dixon McCready. You remember him? No, me neither. <laughs> Jesus, the way he said his own name should have tipped me off. Dixon, Dixon McCready, rhymes with CD. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Sexual harassment that just worked out. That's what we called it. I thought it was so funny and charming at the time. Like, we beat the system. What did all those adults who thought they knew better? What did they know? <laughs> all the adults who thought I was too young that told us to wait. I knew it was perfect. It was true love. <laughs> uh, oh, what could possibly go wrong? I asked my mother during one of those endless stupid fights. What could possibly go wrong? Well, as it turned out, things, many things could go wrong. And did wonderfully impossibly wrong. And um, at 22, had my first hit movie and uh, my first tabloid scandal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was a divorced mother of a two-year-old son. And the universe said, well, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, 
super fun. Super yeah. fun. I enjoy it. Thank you. I enjoyed that so much. <laughs> you know what? I, I thought that there, there was an opportunity to have some fun with that. I thought maybe you could lean on a little bit more that I didn't hear until the second time through is that the whole, whole uh, th thing about his name. Oh, yeah. Dixon. <laughs> Dixon. I really think that you could lean on the dick there to. Oh, yeah. Um, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> uh, to to further that comedic device. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I got no notes for you. You're you. Know, I got. I think. I think one thing you should do, Maya, is is every now and then, because you so know this character. And you you you. The way you took the notes was amazing. Is that when you go into a room and stuff, you should say, "Look, I've got a couple of takes on this. Can I show you both?" Because that's oh, that's really? when you when you feel confident to play like that casting people want to see that because if you go in and do the first take and they go oh, yeah she's she could play this thing and they go what you had a second take and you give us that one suddenly you're given the director ideas and i i just think that flexibility was just wonderful to see and you should embrace that you know in general you know sorry right. i think as you know in this new time i mean of course almost everything you do is, in audition is on tape anyway but to send them two totally uh, different takes on that is just that's delightful oh um, it shows them that you're there to play and i think everybody likes that yeah and it shows them you know that you you can do you can do the scene anyway yeah they can ask you to do it five different ways and you you can do you can give them that too so yeah. i think that's that's always a good thing okay. that you're no notes lovely <laughs> <laughs> beautiful carry on <laughs> uh molly hi hey, hi molly hi how are you good how are you bfa drama new york awesome yeah. and you're six one i am six one you will stand above i do i tend to <laughs> it's it's fabulous you know i um, I'm a short person and I've worked with many tall women uh, just as it turned out. And I, I often found that they would, they would, um, they'd be like, well, if I wasn't so tall, it'd be like, oh, fuck you. Shut up. It's <laughs> fabulous to be tall. You can come in as Portia and you instantly have a command. You know, it, it's a wonderful thing. So yeah. I don't even know you. I don't know if you, you you complain about it. But it's no, it, it did. It, it took me a while, but my, I'm one of the short ones in my family. My dad and my brother are six seven and six eight, so I had no choice. Wow, you're the runt. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's 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 see you do Portia with all that height. I was actually so I I can do Portia. I'm happy to do Portia, but I prepared people, places, and things, but I didn't. Oh, know I'm so be sorry. So oh, I was, either one you want to do, I got no, I got no, I got no skin in it. Okay, yeah, cool. whatever you you're comfortable with. I got really excited because the people, places, and things monologue, Renata would be playing the uh, mother of my character. Oh, so, oh, great! Yeah. That's a, like, that book ends it for us. Great. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is Emma. She is in rehab. She's just spent her first ten days in rehab. She's just finished reading the 12 step program book and she has some thoughts with her doctor. I really need you to be cleverer than this. I really need you to at least match me intellectually because otherwise I'll leave and if I leave, I don't know. I am not powerless. I am not helpless. I don't believe addiction is a disease and I am scared and angered at the suggestion that from now on it's either eternal abstinence or binge to death. I can't surrender to a higher power because there isn't one. There just isn't and you as someone who lives in the 21st century should know that. I wake up in wet sheets in places I don't recognize, 
with bruises I can't account for, men I don't know. I've stolen from people. I've slept on the streets. I'm in trouble, I know that, but this book, this process can't help me. You can't help me. You want me to conceptualize a world in which I am the sole agent of my own destiny and at the same time admit my absolute powerlessness. It's a fatal contradiction and I won't start building foundations on a flawed premise. I chose this place because it is ugly and gray and in the middle of a parking lot. And every night I can look out onto the traffic and the homeless people and remind myself that this world is just purposeless chaos. I need something definitive. I need to be fixed. I need to read this play. <laughs> I really love it. It's, yeah, I love Duncan McMillan's writing. Um, it's, uh, uh, I'm just, uh, because I am, I, I'm a, a child of the 12 step program. I'm very familiar with the steps and the powerlessness thing is number one. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I came to know I was powerless and of course she's in the first 10 days of sobriety. So that's the thing that she is like, oh no, I'm not powerless. No, no, no. Um, she's like, as everybody thinks in the beginning, my case is different. I, I am not that person. Listen, I just wake up sweating with strange men. So, and it, I, I don't want to take this on. You've got to fix me. So, I mean, that's, there, that's where she ends on that. Um, uh, it's just, I mean, anybody who's familiar with those programs, this is such a delightful monologue. It's, it's fabulous. Uh, and you, and you do it well. Uh, I, uh, I would love to see you play it again, driving towards the point of, uh, of that. No, I'm not going to do this. I'm not. Because we ne we now know from having seen the other actress play your mother, yeah, you've never taken any responsibility. So that's a lie, it, you know. That it's it's like, uh, or it's 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 true to her former pattern that she's she's not, and it's it's a plea for somebody else to fix her because she doesn't have the wherewithal to fix herself. Because mm -hmm. she's not really come to grips with the fact that she's the only one. You, um, but you, you got any thoughts on that, Chuck? I would just ask why you don't leave the room when you first say, why don't, why don't you leave the room that first chunk after you blow up at him and you go to leave and you stay? I would use your reason for not leaving and staying to drive you through the rest of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So you don't have to start again. It actually starts by that decision not to leave the room and open up. You know what I mean? So be very specific as why you don't just keep going through that door. And I think that will help in the in the in the journey of the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. And maybe start again with the stakes high at the big. Like fuck you with this stuff. This doesn't work. I'm smarter than this. You're a 21st century guy. You should know better than this shit. Fuck and leave. Then why do you stay? It's so strong. See, see what that does to you chemically, a bit viscerally differently, okay? Great. Yeah, cool. I need you to be cleverer than this. I need you to at least match me intellectually, because otherwise I'll leave. And if I leave, I don't know it. I am not powerless. I am not helpless. I don't believe addiction is a disease. And I am scared and angered at the suggestion that from now on, it's either eternal abstinence or binge to death. I can't surrender to a higher power because there isn't one. There just isn't. And you, as someone who lives in the 21st century, should know that. I wake up in wet sheets, in places I don't recognize, with Bruises I can't account for, and men I don't know. I've stolen from people. 
I've slept on the streets. I, I'm in trouble, I know that, but this book, this process can't help me. You can't help me. You want me to conceptualize a world in which I am the sole agent of my own destiny and at the same time admit my absolute powerlessness. It's a fatal contradiction. And I won't start building foundations on a flawed premise. I chose this place because it is ugly and gray and in the middle of a parking lot. And every night I can look out onto the traffic and the homeless people and remind myself that this world is just purposeless chaos. I need something definitive. I need to be fixed. I'm gonna throw one thing at it, Annie, you can help with this. What if everything up until I need to be fixed, what if the scene where you're about to leave and go, I need to be fixed, what if that's the whole scene? What if the whole scene was you're about to leave and you know what, I need you to fix me. I, I want you to really hold on to that is that there's a wonderful line you go where you say, my options are, what are your two options? Perpetual abstinence? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, binge to death. What, oh my goodness, sorry. Out of context, it made my brain yeah. go. Um, uh, I'm scared and angry such and now on or either. Uh, oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Now on, uh, the options are either uh, yeah, yeah, abstinence or binge to death. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really want you to, 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 to think about what you're saying is that the options are either I never do this thing again yeah. that you love, so that is the alt. I never do it again or I die. Don't rush out. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just trying to say that you can be as angry as you want, but at the end of the day, it comes back to the fact that I need you to fix me. So enough with it. You have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right now, it's the I need me to fix you. Something like comes tagged on at the end. But the whole point is like, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I, I'm here because it's, I sleep with, I, I need you. The point is that. So you need to get to that. Okay. And just, just what I'm trying to draw. I do, I, I need, do, I yeah. Mean, the options are just, they, they scared me to hear you say that. The idea that someone says, you, you either never do it again, something you love, or you're going to die. I mean, think of those two options. Do, yeah, exactly. What you just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Annie. I she, don't... Yeah, she's in, I think she's in total denial. All the points she's making are saying that every point in the first four steps are ill thought. You know, it is, it's a common thing that people do. It's like, no, none of this whole program is bullshit. You know, <laughs> it's not it, yeah. it's like, I, it, these are not my problems. I mean, this, this program has been the most successful program in a hundred years. <laughs> it's the only way you can do it. And the only way you can do it is to stop. If you're an alcoholic, you can only stop and never do it again, or you're going to die. They, it, I mean, statistically, that is what happens. So she's saying all that is just bullshit. He's full of shit. And you would certainly expect more of somebody in his position. You know, so I think, I mean, that's why it's so hilarious. Yeah. It is. And it is hilarious because it's, a, it's hilarious and it's heartbreaking because, um, you know, what's a... Uh, um, it's like Trump saying, I didn't say that, I didn't do it, when he's just lied. I mean, you, you, you know it's just ego. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, and I think that you can probably count on the, the, the psychiatrist or the person that she's talking to has heard all this a hundred times. Mm -hmm. this, it's People come in and they're in denial. It's like, it must be very amusing to see you carry on like that because it, the, it, it's just like everybody else who comes in and is in utter denial because these, because you are powerless over it. Your yeah. parents are impossible and uh, 
you want to be fixed, but you're not willing to embrace those other things. So um, thinking about that, it, it, uh, um, and because Chuck and I are just merciless master teachers. <laughs> so, <laughs> do, you, do you mind doing it one more time? And just, yeah. Just for our entertainment. Yeah. And there's a sense of, there's also a sense of, I think, a sense of just the, the, the length she goes to before she says, I need you to fix me, is a sense of desperation on her side also that is a sense of panic as, as it yeah, dawns okay, on you yeah, what yeah, people yeah. are really saying before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Great. yeah. Excellent. I really need you to be cleverer than this. I really need you to at least match me intellectually because otherwise I'll leave. And if I leave, I don't... I am not powerless. I am not helpless. I don't believe addiction is a disease. And I am scared and angered at the suggestion that from now on, it's either eternal abstinence or binge to death. I can't surrender to a higher power because there isn't one, there just isn't. And you as someone who lives in the 21st century should know that. I wake up in wet sheets, in places I don't recognize, with bruises I can't account for, men I don't know. I've stolen from people. I've slept on the streets. I'm in trouble, I know that. But this book, this process can't help me. You can't help me. You want me to conceptualize a world in which I am the sole agent of my own destiny and at the same time admit my absolute powerlessness. It's a fatal contradiction. I won't start building foundations on a flawed premise. I chose this place because it is ugly and gray and in the middle of a parking lot. And every night, I can look out onto the homeless people and the traffic and remind myself that this world is just purposeless chaos. I need something definitive. I need to be fixed. Annie? <laughs> um. I think, have you, have you ever been to, this is super personal, you don't have to answer this. Um, it, I, th I think that you would, if you played this character or you're gonna continue to use this monologue, I think you should either go on a Zoom meeting for AA or Al-Anon, either one. Um, and uh, uh, because I think, then you would, because it's a very, very particular thing. Okay. And uh, I come from a long line of alcoholics. So I've had a lot of opportunity <laughs> to hear all of this. And I'm just, I, I can't to, you know, when I started coming along, people were still doing some, um, you know, uh, actors theater kind of things. Like if they were gonna play a drug addict, they'd become a drug addict. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought that that was bullshit. It's like, well, I don't know, why don't you just imagine it? Why don't you use your imagination? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I, and I'm not, certainly not suggesting you become that. But the alternative is that you have these meetings that you could see and you could, um, uh, you could, you could see this conversation 20 times over in those okay. meetings. And it's all it, also just for, I, I mean, they're the best monologues ever. <laughs> you want a great monologue, go on. I mean, they have a vast store of um, monologues they're called shares mm -hmm. that people give. And this is, it's one of the best. I mean, surely this playwright is well versed in this. Mm -hmm. But, uh, because it, 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 it's all talking points. And you see these people in extreme denial who are also in extreme pain. Um, I'm telling you, if you just Zoomed one AA meeting, you 
you could then go into this uh, this uh, 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 session and. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chuck, you got anything? I would say that as I haven't um, gone through the twelve steps, but what was coming through that, and what I would say you should keep working on is that. I mean, you have such an engaging in, in energy. Seriously, Molly, it's like, it's really very strong and very beautiful. And there were moments in this where you just went, the ridiculousness of this, to think that, and I think it's sort of what Annie is saying about the denial. And I think the concept you should drop on, 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 on this character when you start her is the fact that, and, and her mother says it in the play, her inability to actually see her responsibility for stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And her inability to, you know, that's the joke of it is that she's making these serious points, but she's completely contradicting herself as she's making them. So the more earnest you can be with the points, it's like, you know, I mean, you should know better than that. It's not, you don't have to convince him. You, you, she has herself like, I know this is that you should know better than, you know, all this I stuff is it. jumping around and not giving herself. And the thing with that, I, 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 this isn't specific to, um, necessarily the 12 step or stuff but i in general when i hear speeches like this is when people are clearly self-deluding you can't allow any time for you to seriously process what you're saying do you know what i mean because okay. it will catch up it would catch up with you the ridiculousness of what you're saying so it's almost like you talk to keep your logic at the forefront yeah absolutely it's kind of, it's kind of like i don't know maybe if you ingested you know um bleach you know you, you just keep talking yeah keep your logic at the forefront before you can think about it. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And yeah, yeah. Um, Annie? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, all It's of that. interesting to hear it in this way, having been with the monologue for a while of like this, there are all these bad things that have happened to me when it, it, it there's the ridiculousness of, uh, yeah, all these things have bad happened to me and it, you have to fix them now. You go fix yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that entitlement? She has a huge yeah. sense of entitlement, which is, a, I think, uh, you know, um, one of the qualities, you know, is that sort of entitlement of, of, of it's not my fault, it's your fault. <laughs> Although yeah. it's my fault that I'm here, you're right. You know, so just playing with all those things will give a richness. But I would say that if you walked into the room with that energy and whatever, I'd already be thinking, I can work with that. Do you know what I mean? So, but I'd go back to this speech since you've known it for a while and what Annie is saying, if you want to stick with that and maybe try and, it's, you, know, you know. It's a great monologue. It's, yeah. it's, it's rich because there's so many contrasts and then she turns every single thing around. You know, yeah. black is white, yeah. white is black. These things aren't helping me. You've got to fix me. It's like, and you know the person sitting over there going, no, that's why we have the 12 steps because yeah. that's the thing that fixes you. I'm trying to fix you. It's like, well, I'm not having any of that. Mm -hmm. I just need you to fix me. It's like, I've given you the template. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Beautiful, but lovely work, Molly. Annie, yeah. you've been so amazing. We could do this all day, really. But Michelle, can you please uh, uh, unmute everyone to say their thanks to Annie uh, for being such an amazing master teacher today, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank yeah. you, Annie. Thank you so much, Annie. Oh, well, you're so fun. good. Here in isolation. It was all so uh, beautiful. Thank you. And Chuck, yeah. gosh, aren't you fabulous? I think we're a great team, really. We're, we're a team. Well, next time I come see Casa Potts in LA and stuff, maybe we should do an impromptu masterclass around one of the, the pool or something like that. You know, we'd get people. <laughs> um, I, I am absolutely for or we or to do this uh, this uh, this format again I, absolutely uh, we i mean every almost every guest has said that so we'll figure out a way of carrying this on anyway. we'll find a way of doing it but guys really and also today was a really really wonderful quality of openness and performance today it was a real eye-opener so thank you for that annie oh. potts you've been amazing I just want to say before we go, my husband is a director and uh, he directs TV mostly. And uh, often he comes home and he'll complain about actors. He doesn't get very far with that with me though. <laughs> but he'll go, you know, I, I gave him a note and they just, they just, I mean, they just, you know, couldn't do it or, and he said, or they resist it. And I said, but every actor's first impulse is to resist. And uh, and he went, 
why it's like because that's human yeah. you, you you have an idea and you've been working on something and you know you start to unspool it, and it, it, it you think that that's happening but I and I know it of myself to any director give me a note and it'll be like instantly my mind goes that's wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's no that's not right that I'm, I can't go that way that's not me that's not who I am or whatever it is but I you know I I have tried to work with that so that every time a director has something to say to me it's like Annie whatever you do don't don't resist just go I want to try and make that happen because yeah. you've seen fit to point it out to me and I want to try. And then it becomes such a fulfilling game of creative play. So, and I found you all so non-resistive and I wanted to thank you for that and, uh, and tell you, yeah, you keep that up because that's, that is the game not to not, don't don't resist we, it's our job to surrender everything it's our job i always say don't our job is not to put a mask on but to pull the curtain back from the human heart yeah it, it when you do that then everything is uh everything falls into place well i mean i mean it was so wonderful seeing how you delicately work with people and uh yes we will do something like this again definitely i, I love working with you it was really good fun and guys thank you for joining us today um it was really a fun one for me to sit back and